welcome back to the second episode of the book processing series that I'm doing. Here is David Epstein's range and I'm Christian and this is uh, what we're going to do today or what I'm going to do and what you will be seeing. Um, I finished the introduction last time which was just, let me check again, 14 pages long. The next chapter, chapter 2, The Cult of the Head Start is... 22 pages long so that's more and it's also not an introduction so there's probably more stuff in there but i haven't looked yet um which means that uh, this episode might either take longer for me to record or um i'm going to split this up into multiple sessions because i can't concentrate for more than two hours straight and i don't want to record like four days and compress it into one hour of video so i'd rather split this up into uh, multiple sessions if necessary but we will see how things go as they go um first i want to address some feedback we received uh, thank you all for the amazing feedback i was very very happy to hear that um in general most of you liked what you saw um but i could be more to the point so this will be me being to the point um and I'm going to switch up the format a bit and uh, sp either speed up the video process more or um, skip video most of the time and only show you snapshots with the timestamp, how long it took to get there. And then we'll discuss like screenshots instead of seeing um, me uh, speed through the whole process. We'll see. I will see during the editing um, what makes sense. But this is this is how I want to approach it this time. So we can give feedback on that format and then we can try different things. Um, yeah, that's it. Let's get started. I'm looking forward to the first chapter of David Epstein's book range. Um, still no uh, purchasing advertisement, advert, still <laughs> purchasing a recommendation um, so far. Uh, yeah, let's see how we get there. Um, one thing I want to address first uh, regarding the last chapter is um, that I didn't like the, the rhetoric um, that he employed. Um, I had trouble with the... Uh, with reference to the cardiac patients uh, study in the end because I, I thought it would be relevant but it turned out that I wasn't quite sure how, how relevant it really was. Um, I asked Sasha what he thought about the study and um, you saw some of this go into the um, actual note in the video. But thinking about this and talking about this um, with Sasha some more um, made me realize that yeah well this is bringing this this up is useful for David Epstein because um, now I have the feeling that there's something he was on to uh, in that chapter um, with the reference. But there's no real argument. It's just, you know, someone measured somewhere that uh, cardiac patients died less when people were on, the doctors were on, um, on meetings. Interesting, right? Uh, so we talked about specialization and uh, how specialists can harm people. Um, let's go in a totally different direction. And, and this thing lingers in your head and it's manipulating you to um, to think that, that David Epstein has a point there, but he doesn't clearly state it because the study doesn't support it. Um, yeah, this is weird. We're going to see um, if things change. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a real uh, scientist. Um, I want to point out. Uh, I have z virtually zero experience um, processing empirical studies. Um, I'm, I'm relying on the help of, uh, I'm relying on help um, by Sasha a bit uh, in, in the last video and probably a bit more in this one. Um, yeah, so let's see where <laughs> where my, my mediocre skills uh, will lead me to. See you on the other side, processing the book. Well, now we start with the book and the note taking. Everything is booted up. I opened all the applications that I needed in advance. And here's me having a look at the book and the chapter overview. From this chapter onward, I try to write a short summary um, right inside the chapter heading, next to the chapter heading, sorry, um, because I figured uh, <laughs> like so many times before, I would probably never process this book, so better leave some some trails of um, some some summaries and some trails of my thinking uh, inside. Uh, well, surprise! It now turns out I am processing this book and still find these kind of useful because 
the chapters aren't this dense anyway, you know? So, it's not that long and there's not that much that I annotated, not much um, that I marked or um, highlighted. So I'll look for Epstein in my archive and look what I find. I find another note which is tagged with double hash inbox, which means it's uh, automatically generated from a mobile device. Uh, there's no reference, but it's, as you see here, um, it's a note about tactics and strategies and chess and hmm, where did it come from? It comes from a note that I created on uh, a remark by Whitehead about automation. I remember doing this because it's not that long ago, hon honestly, but um, still it I didn't, I didn't expect this to turn up because I didn't remember taking it. But now that I see it, I do remember that it was there uh, in August. So up next would be the task to look up um, how this is relevant and where exactly I wanted to quote Epstein um, in, this, in this draft of a note. Because that's a problem when I take notes um, on mobile devices. You, you usually... I don't have the original sources ready, um, browsing your archive is really hard, so you have to make compromises. And my compromise is I double take I, I take it with a double hash inbox and then process the note later. And when I process it later, I add the full annotations, which is additional work and um, the note, while automatically being put into the archive, isn't quite ready for prime time. But it's better than having nothing, and nothing is, is uh, what I usually uh, do uh, with regard to my uh, Zettelkasten note archive. Um, yeah, so that's, that's that, and here's me uh, rectifying my uh, missing my mistake of uh, leaving the information missing for so long. And then this is the result after I added the information that was missing, namely the page references. This um, old node and um, the automation node that is related to this um, also have to be added to the Epstein um, structure node, which I'm doing here. And now you can marvel at the result of both nodes making their way into the structure node. There are two links and, well, that's a start. Another thing I discovered in the note from my inbox was a reference to the difference between strategy and tactics. And I remembered that I have written about this someday. And I discovered a note from 2013 here. I'm rewriting it in English, refactoring, so to speak, and adding some uh, additional links um, to the Epstein book. And here you are. This is the new refactored note um, that I'm going to use from here on forward. And using it is exactly what I do next. I'm adding a link to this uh, strategy and tactics note in my structure and also um, at the or incorporate the summary that I wrote inside of the chapter's um, title page. So I have something to work with um, as I process the rest of the chapter, like a framework, if you will. And this summary is totally made up so far. Um, I didn't use reference, I just wrote it from the top of my head as I looked at the summary page at the beginning. And the beginning of it all is uh, looking at the terms wicked and kind environments and what they mean, uh, where Epstein uses them. So I have a feeling for the um, location in the chapter. To then actually add links to the definition, I start with a link that leads nowhere, um, which I'm going to click. And then you will see there's no note that matches this new um, title. And I'm creating it from scratch right there, right then. N now this term definition leads me to another problem. Um, the first, in fact, for uh, this processing run, which is I don't have access to the book that uh, Epstein is citing. It's a book by Hogarth, and I was able to look it up, but my local university library doesn't have it. Um, I would have to uh, order it from another library. <sighs> but that's not going to help now, is it? So what am I going to do with this? I'm going to cite Epstein, um, leaving the reference to Hogarth and note that I'm writing not citable here because I don't have access to the original, but I do have access to Epstein's summary um, of the concept, which I'm going to leave to work with it uh, for now. But eventually I would have to, if I uh, want to do proper science, that is, eventually I would have to rectify this problem again and get the Hogarth book. My personal takeaway from the process here is that 
if all you have is second-hand information and you don't have access to the primary source, roll with it, but be honest and mark it as such. It's not the real thing, but having it as a note, as a settle in your archive is better than having nothing that uh, expresses the idea. And in terms of expressing ideas, here is my own idea, which is deliberate practice could be impossible in wicked learning environments, which follows from the definition of deliberate practice um, that I created last week, um, which was that feedback is necessary, feedback by teacher that is, and here wicked environments are defined as lacking reliable feedback. So it's probably not that interesting, but it's still unique as far as I'm concerned. The proper next action then is to link to this discovery f that I made from the concept definition for deliberate practice. And here you see it, a simple link in the list at the bottom of the note. Then with this link in place, the next step after that is to add the same note to the Epstein book overview, the structure note. So we have the information there as well. Here you see it. Then while I was here, I also decided to rephrase the link to um, the note above, which is the link to the Wicked Learning Environment, and added some information or commentary, so, so I know why the link is there and what I think about the term. By that, I of course don't mean to, um, yeah, well, to uh, to evaluate the term on its own, on itself, but the relevance um, in this point in the structure note. And here I'm editing the deliberate practice could be impossible in wicked learning environments note to add some more detail, which I found lacking. And you see that I employ the missing link technique, the, the wiki um, note creation link technique, so to speak, to get to the kind learning environments definition, which I really, really, really would like to have at this point, but haven't. So that's the next logical step. This next part finally reminds me of a YouTube comment left under the last episode, um, which was uh, that this book encourages you to have, and this is a German quote, Mut zur Lücke, which roughly translates to encourage leaving out stuff. Um, encourage not to be comprehensive in what you're doing when you process this book. Because, well, as far as I'm concerned, this book isn't really dense in information. It's full of anecdotes, as usual, when you have a look at uh, self-help and non-fiction books that are targeted at the masses and not uh, academic textbooks. Because, well, as you see, I don't have access to the Hogarth reference, um, and Epstein doesn't cite a lot of sources here, so yeah, that's the best I can do, and I'm only picking up the things that I find most interesting and leaving out the rest, whatever that is. Yeah, and here, it's time for a break. Finally, the first section, the first session is over, and the second session begins with me looking up another reference that Epstein does make, and which is quite interesting, as it turns out. Um, it's a reference to a paper by Kahneman and Klein. Uh, they both have different opinions on how expertise is acquired, it turns out, but in this paper, which both collaborated on, um, they find that in the end, if they if they discuss their respective points for a while, um, the differences aren't that big. But to get started, I mean, I could find the full text, but to um, get started citing this and uh, processing this um, paper, I wanted to have a reference first. So, uh, there was nothing helpful in the library catalog, but uh, I found the uh, DOI in the uh, URL of the paper, um, which I, being the hacker that I am, um, which I copied out to look it up on PubMed, and there you are, the Kahneman and Klein paper turned up. So, the final reference um, prepared. This is what it looks like in my um, literature management system. With this final reference, I can now start to quote Kahneman and Klein from the paper. Finally, and this is the quote that I end up using. It's not much, but you see, there's quite a lot of stuff involved to get to this point if the reference um, you're working on is new. 
thus armed with the Kahneman and Klein reference, I can now start to quote their paper directly, um, which includes terms like validity and uncertainty, which are way more specific than the stuff Epstein uses. I like this, but the note I ended up creating was very lacking. This is the preliminary note, and I branched off from here to first define the terms. And the result is going to be much nicer, I promise. Um, but first I have to start with, with what I've got. The paper isn't very specific. It's um, like a summary uh, of a conversation, I guess. But what I usually want to have is clear definition of terms. But they just don't provide this for everything that I um, would like to use. So I'm left with uh, quoting them here and there and uh, rephrasing what they say. And this is a note on the validity of task environments and per their definition. Um, which means that I can now add this information back into the definition on kind learning environments, which are closely related to high validity and um, low uncertainty environments, I think. And you see, I'm making I'm making sense of everything myself here. I'm refactoring the note again, and this is the combination of the validity and kind learning environments stuff, which is new as far as I'm concerned. Again, um, probably Epstein had a similar idea, but he didn't uh, need to, or didn't didn't want to, or whatever. He d he just didn't uh, include it in his book. I I can only speculate, and that's not good for anything. Up next. I'm expanding my note on validity and certainty, which um, apparently can vary independently. Uh, that, that is the note that I found lacking in the beginning, to add more information to it. This part is 13 minutes long and I condense it to, I think it's about 45 seconds. So you see, I have to speed this up a lot and you s still notice that I'm rewriting a lot and adding and removing stuff. But in the end, this is this is what I think captures the gist best, or thought captured the gist best. Maybe I'm thinking things differently now. Who knows? Um, now you might be tempted to say, but Christian, you have to know if you think things differently, right? Uh, no, not really. This is a very fast-playing video, um, which I'm narrating to, and I don't have much time to process the information that I'm seeing. I just guess that with the time that has passed since recording this, uh, things have just stated in my mind some more. So things could be different. And this is the integration of the new information into the definition of validity of task environments per Kahneman and Klein that I have created before. Since I'm now seemingly content with the validity stuff, I'm um, cross-linking the wicked and kind learning environment notes. And here you see the result of um, me adding the link to the wicked, um, yeah, to the wicked node for the kind learning environment node, and up next, obviously, I have to go to the kind learning environments node and add a link back to the wicked environment node. So I do know later that both are opposite, and I can get from one to another without much um, hassle. And with these definitions ready, I add both to the um, structure note for the book by Epstein. And luckily, there's time for a break again, which I return from refreshed and ready to do more interesting things. This time, uh, the topics and the breaks align very nicely. And here, I'm figuring out that I want to process a uh, an argument that Epstein makes, which is that savants um, don't should show expertise in their field if um, specialization really was the only thing that mattered. It's a it's a kind of useful argument, I think. It's it's not bad um, in my book, and here it is as I rephrased it. But next, of course, I have to look up where the argument comes from. It's not Epstein's. It's um. Well, not really. It's based on a paper um, that I have to look up, which I'm doing now. And this paper um, is about uh, child geniuses. And the Epstein quote says that uh, no savant has ever become a big C creator. Like, 
not a creator of, of anything, but a creator of creative things, if you want. Yeah, I'm adding the reference to my reference manager. I found it very, rather quickly. And then I figured, well, this reference is not complete until I add the, um, the collection that um, this paper is printed in as well. And here you see me adding the collection. Um, that's the, the side key at the very top. And next I'm cross-referencing this collection in the uh, paper itself. And by that, um, when I should I ever add um, this paper to a, to a LaTeX document of sorts, the BIP LaTeX or BibTeX processor will pick up um, both the child and the parent reference and print me a very nice cross-reference in the bibliography. I like that. So I have this paper and I have the reference prepared. Now I can try to find where Epstein is uh, quoting this paper. But since I don't have the full text and I don't have the VPN prepared um, to access the university library and then get the paper, I resort to a different solution. I create a new node again, starting from the structure node here um, by using the this link does not exist method that we've used before, clicking on it, bam, add a new node created from scratch um, via the link and then uh, quote the, the summary of the paper that is available online and, hmm, well, I have to be content with a placeholder this time. This is a paper I can easily get from the university, um, but not right now. So that's what I've got. It's a placeholder that I can refer reference, but I cannot really use um, for real research to... Uh, remember that there is this loophole in my archive. I'm also adding a to-do item to my getting things done that I've set up in Emacs org mode that you see here in all its beauty with ASCII art at the top. Isn't that nice? So now I'm beginning to wrap up this session. I'm here um, changing the link that I created earlier and rephrasing the, um, the, the, the quote by Epstein a bit. And that's it um, with the placeholder being used for now. I have to rewrite it, of course, later um, when I get the real source. And there's another concept that I found interesting, but I couldn't find a source for so far. And I'm, I leave it. I leave it like this. The cognitive entrenchment. This is supposed to say that your skill is going to get in the way when you try to learn new things. And I guess you've all experienced something like this before. And I guess I'm going to expand on this in a later episode. Here I'm adding some commentary at the top that the basis for the 10,000 hour rule um, yeah, is, not, is not good advice. Um, it's basically critique for the Colvin book that I used last time. And here's the final note with the chapter one stuff that I've created in this session. Yeah, that's it. It's a lot of links and it's a whole lot different than the first one, don't you think? So we'll leave it at that. This is the final result of two and a half hours of work. I, I liked it. It was, it was very fun this time. I, I think I'm getting in the groove already. And with that, I want to thank you very much for listening and watching. I hope you learned something today and please consider leaving a comment below or in the forums um, to tell us what you liked about this iteration of the format. I tried to do more freeze frames to focus on certain aspects and sped up the rest by a lot, like 1200% at times. Hope it helped. Um, yeah, that's it for this episode. See you next week. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.